Kanye West just got slapped with a $1 million lien on his Malibu mansion. This is going to throw a bit of a wrench in his ability to sell the place. It got to the point where I told him, like, we're out of money. You need to send more money. We're completely out of money. I can't do any kind of physical labor again. I feel like a 75-year-old man now. Are you going to turn down an opportunity to work with a multi-billionaire? The lien was placed on the property just a month after Kanye listed his waterfront home for sale for a whopping $53 million. And this whole situation will technically block Kanye from being able to sell his home for any price until he settles this big lawsuit. We just talked about this house last week, and based on what Kanye did, did to the place. I'm not all that surprised that the contractor ultimately slapped a lien on it. Let's dive into the details, but first, just wanted to say that like 45,000 of you guys watched that last video but didn't click subscribe. So if you're into these kind of stories, just hit subscribe. Now, in case you missed the last episode, long story short here is that Kanye bought this house at 24844 Malibu Road in September of 2021 for just over $57 million. He proceeded to completely gut the house. Presumably he was going to do some remodeling, but all he ever did was demo work and then he just left the house sitting there to rot. And here we are a couple years later, he has relisted the home for sale for 53 million. This means that Kanye stands to lose around $10 million after you account for all the money that he spent on demo plus all the resale costs like commissions and closing costs and all that. The contractor who did all the demo work here was named Tony Saxon. He was a celebrity contractor, but he has since retired from that line of work. Nowadays, he's a soul singer, a record dealer, and a DJ. My mental state is just crazy and my neck is broken and I can't do anything. And this whole situation has made major headlines, but it wasn't exactly a huge shocker considering that Kanye hasn't had the best of luck with his real estate deals over his lifetime. Plus, he's just generally kind of always wound up in drama. There's that Adidas situation that probably cost him around $500 million. He has another lawsuit going on for punching a fan who wanted his autograph. He's had somewhat of a questionable dating life ever since he and Kim Kardashian split. There was that time way back when he stormed the stage at some music awards show and he stole the microphone from Taylor Swift. He's been banned from Twitter and from Instagram for saying crazy stuff on his accounts. I mean, you get the point. Kanye hasn't had exactly the best track record over the past, like, five years or so. Not to mention, just a couple of weeks ago, the Daily Mail uncovered that he actually owes over a million dollars in back property and business taxes. He's got two mansions in Calabasas that he hasn't been paying property taxes on for a while now. There's over $100,000 in delinquent taxes owed there. Then he's got another $900,000 worth of active tax liens that are filed against his clothing line, Yeezy Apparel. The guy is still worth around $400 million as of the last last report, so he's probably going to be okay. Not really sure why he's not paying his property or his business taxes, but anyways, let's move on. Kanye's remodel job on this house in Malibu kind of already had some drama surrounding it before this lawsuit even came to be. Check it out. These photos here are actually of what the house looked like when Kanye bought it. It's a very stark modern house. It's actually kind of funny that the listing agent is using these old photos and not showing the house in its current condition. I know the style isn't everybody's cup of tea, but the point here is that the home was very clean and move-in ready when Kanye bought it. Plus, not only was this house move-in ready, but it was also designed by Tadao Ando, who is a very, very respected Japanese architect. And for anybody who's not super into architecture, buying a Tadao Ando house and then demoing it is kind of like buying a Picasso painting and tearing it in half. It's just something you don't do. What Kanye did here was especially surprising to me considering that his new wife, Bianca Sensori, is actually an architect herself. She worked at DP Toscano in Australia before they met. Whatever motive that Kanye had for tearing apart this architecturally significant house, that's what he did. He bought the place, he hired Tony Saxon to demo it, and then he just kind of left it there to rot and forgot about it. But here's the thing. Allegedly, Kanye never paid that contractor, Tony, for all the demo work that he did on the place. I was the project manager. Uh, as an umbrella term, <laughs> the caretaker, security guard, <laughs> I was the coordinator. I was the cleaner. And this is where the lawsuit comes into play. 
Tony hired attorney Ron Zambrano, who filed the lien against Kanye West to basically just ensure that his client gets that payment that Kanye owes to him. Now that mechanics lien is officially recorded, meaning if somebody wants to buy Kanye's Malibu home, they're gonna have to deal with settling this lien and paying Tony in full before they're able to close. These mechanics liens work a little bit differently just depending on what state you're in, but in general, how they work is if a contractor does work on a property, it doesn't matter what kind of contractor, it can be a framer, a plumber, a tile installer, a roofer, any contractor. If they do work on a property and they're never paid for that work, they can file what's called a mechanics lien. And this is basically just a debt that gets tied to the title of that property. These liens are recorded with the county recorder's office and if they go unpaid, they can eventually allow for a foreclosure auction where the property is forced to sell. In the case of Kanye's house, we have Kanye who owns a house that's worth around $53 million. At least that's what it's listed for. Who knows what it's actually worth. And then we have a contractor who claims he's owed a million dollars, so he put a $1 million mechanics lien on Kanye's property. This means that if Kanye does sell this house on his own, then it's never going to go to foreclosure. Kanye will basically take the proceeds from the sale. He'll pay off any first mortgage lender if he has one. And then after that, the million dollar payment would go to Tony before Kanye gets to pocket the rest of the money. The way the attorney worded it is he said, it's no secret that Kanye is having financial problems. So we just want to make sure that he has enough money to pay the $1 million he still owes our client before he goes completely broke. Savage. And the claims in the lawsuit against Kanye are disability discrimination, multiple labor code violations, unpaid wages, and wrongful termination. Tony claims that he was forced to work 16 hours a day and sleep on the floor near open insulation. I told him I got hurt. I said, my back and my neck are destroyed. I can't be up there and I can't be sleeping there. Plus he claimed that he was terminated after he refused to rip out the house's electrical system and replace it with large generators, which he believed would be a fire hazard. Now I have to add a little bit of commentary here. I did talk to Tony myself off the record. He seems like a nice enough guy in the time that I talked to him anyway, but I just wanted to add my two cents about what's outlined here in the lawsuit. Now, a lot of you guys know I'm a real estate developer myself, so I hire contractors all the time. And even though I like contractors to work long days, I have never forced a contractor to work a 16 hour shift or sleep on the floor at the project. I mean, in reality, I'm not even sure how you would do that. What I'm getting at here is that yes, there are a lot of contractors out there who put in long hours, but they do that based on their own free will. And then at the end of their work shift, they always go home to their family. Or if they're working in an area where maybe their house isn't nearby, they go stay in a hotel. It just seems weird to me that a contractor would say that the owner literally forced them to work these long days and to sleep on the floor. I'm an old school dirty rock and roller. You gotta stay late, you gotta sweat, you gotta work. The text log between Tony and Kanye was interesting though. The court documents say that Tony was terminated for not complying with Kanye's dangerous request. I guess to this, Kanye said, if you don't do what I say, you're not gonna work for me. I'm not gonna be your friend anymore, and you'll just see me on TV. <laughs> kind of a weird thing to say, and if Tony has proof of this dialogue happening, then I guess that he kinda has a case that Kanye was abusive to him. Tony's response to Kanye's text was just like, hey, I don't even watch TV, and to that, Kanye ended the exchange with just a, leave. Wow. My last video on this topic got a ton of attention. Like I said earlier, it has almost 50,000 views and of course a ton of comments. Let's check out what some of you guys had to say about this crazy story. We had John who said that he feels really sorry for the home's adjacent neighbors just because of all the noise. Great point. This is an expensive neighborhood. It'd be pretty annoying to live right next door to this house and deal with not only all of the construction noise, but also just all of the negative press. Speaking of neighbors, Surf Stark said that he doesn't understand how a home like this can sell for 50 plus million dollars when you can reach out your window and touch your neighbor's house. 
house. I mean, he's right. These houses are basically right on top of each other, but that's just how it goes in these parts of Malibu. We had a few critics of the architecture. Aaron says, some folks call this structure a parking garage, others a parking deck, and some a parking ramp. I get it. I love this style, but the brutalist style of architecture isn't for everybody. Quite a few people mentioned that Kanye might be purposely trying to take a loss on this sale for tax reasons. Reasonable theory and could make sense if this was an investment property, but here's the thing. Let's say Kanye does lose $10 million on the sale of this house. I don't think that he's able to claim that as a $10 million loss on his taxes if this was either used as his primary residence or as a second home. I love this one here. Buck Hale says that project managing is an exhausting profession, is juggling knives while herding cats. Mr. Saxon sounds like he might be new to the field. And look, I don't know how long Tony was a contractor prior to taking on this job, but this commenter is right. Managing a construction project is a wild roller coaster of a process. It definitely can be intense and really stressful at times. And that's regardless of what house you're working on or who you're working for. So when all of this information was made public, Tony actually went to his Instagram and he made a statement. He said he celebrated the major victory to Day in his legal battle against his very famous former employee rapper. He says his lawyers and he have placed a lien on Kanye's house in Malibu where he was the 24-7 project manager and sole caretaker of. He said the Malibu house project nearly killed him and ruined him for life, damaging his neck and his back in the process. Tony says all he tried to do was be someone in Kanye's life who cared about him, not trying to just be a yes man. Then uh, last, he says he celebrated this lawsuit by buying himself a Korg, which I guess is the best vintage keyboard that you can get. And here it is fitting perfectly in the back of his 1963 Thunderbird. I will say that his claim seems believable, but just because Tony got a lien placed on this property doesn't mean for sure that he is going to get paid out when this house sells. I guess Kanye is already firing back at the lawsuit saying that it needs to be thrown out, and his claim is that his ex-employee Tony was fired fair and square and that he was paid in full. A lot of times people give with an agenda of getting a specific thing back from that specific person. It's hard telling who to believe here, but I'm thinking I am in the wrong line of work because Tony said he was promised that his pay rate for this job would be $20,000 per week. $20,000 per week. Per week, that's like $80,000 per month to manage a demo project on a house that's on the water in Malibu. I mean, come on, if any of you guys out there have a project like this and you need a project manager, let me know, I'll move. Like literally tomorrow. If you're wondering where Kanye lives now, considering he has an abandoned Malibu mansion, according to The Sun, he's got a lavish penthouse apartment in West Hollywood that he lives at and pays $20,000 a month for. Must be nice. That's a wrap for today's episode. Remember, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. I'll see you guys next time.